to the launch event of India's prestigious LVM-3 M4 Chandrayaan-3. Eventually, the destination of Chandrayaan-3 is the moon, located 384,000 kilometers away. On August 23, 2023, India made history with the Chandrayaan-3 mission, becoming the fourth nation to successfully land on the moon and the first to do so at the lunar south pole. In just a few weeks following the landing, the Vikram lander and the Pragyan rover made unprecedented discoveries in this previously unexplored region of the moon. Thanks to the success achieved by the Indian Space Research Organization's moon landing, we now possess evidence of previously unknown lunar phenomena, including recorded seismic activities and the identification of certain Earth elements. One of the most captivating occurrences took place three days after Chandrayaan-3 touched down. The mission's instrument for lunar seismic activity, ILSA, detected a potential moonquake. A journey to the moon's south pole. Moonquakes, as their name implies, are seismic events that occur on the lunar surface, capturing the attention of scientists and researchers for many years. These intriguing phenomena were first detected during the Apollo missions in the early 1970s and the seismic activity recorded by the Chandrayaan-3 mission could mark the first moonquake observed in over 50 years. However, why are these tremors of such significance to scientists? Additionally, what other notable discoveries did the Chandrayaan-3 mission uncover at the moon's south pole? Most importantly, what notable element has eluded discovery by Chandrayaan-3, much like its predecessors? Understanding the criticality of the Chandrayaan-3 mission requires a closer look at its precise landing location on the lunar surface. Before its historic landing, India's Chandrayaan-3 mission followed the setback of Chandrayaan-2's failed soft landing attempt in 2019. However, on July 6, four years later, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, announced the launch date for Chandrayaan-3 July 14. Utilizing Sharikota's second launch pad, the mission successfully achieved liftoff using the LV-M3-M4 vehicle. By August 5th, Chandrayaan-3 reached a significant milestone by entering lunar orbit. On August 23rd, the spacecraft made history by executing a successful landing at the Moon's South Pole, making India the fourth nation to achieve this feat and the first to land in this region. In honor of this achievement, the Indian Prime Minister decided to name the landing site Shiv Shakti. The mission, as per ISRO, includes a lander module and rover designed to operate experimental payloads for a duration of three to six months. The entire craft was engineered to function for one lunar day equivalent to 14 Earth days. During this time, the Vikram lander of Chandrayaan-3 carried three payloads to accomplish its objectives. Chandra Surface Thermophysical Experiment Chase and Its Significance the Chandra Surface Thermophysical Experiment, CHASE, played a crucial role in elucidating the thermal properties of the lunar surface near the polar region. Developed by ISRO's Space Physics Laboratory in collaboration with the Physical Research Laboratory, PRL, CHASE was equipped with a temperature probe featuring a controlled penetration mechanism capable of reaching depths of up to 10 centimeters beneath the lunar surface. Additionally, the probe was outfitted with 10 individual temperature sensors. Thanks to data obtained from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, in 2009, researchers had insights into the Moon's temperature patterns. Prior to Chase's findings, it was well known that lunar surface temperatures could soar as high as 120 degrees, particularly during the daytime at the equator, attributed to the absence of an atmosphere to insulate heat effectively. However, scientists were astonished when Chase recorded surface temperatures significantly higher than their initial predictions. Initially anticipating temperatures between 20 to 30 degree, the recorded temperature of 70 degree prompted a re-evaluation of assumptions. With the probe's sensors, ISRO compiled temperature variation profiles of the lunar surface, even at different depths. This marked the first instance of such detailed profiling conducted for the soil at the Moon's south pole. Upon analyzing the data, scientists noted intriguing variations in subsurface temperature. Unlike the relatively minor variations observed a few centimeters beneath the Earth's surface, the lunar soil exhibited a substantial 50 degree C variation. Notably, the sharp decline in subsurface temperature hinted at the lunar soil's poor heat conductivity. This revelation carries significant implications, particularly for initiatives like Moon to Mars Planetary Autonomous Construction Technology, MMPA, which aim to leverage lunar resources for building infrastructure. 
By utilizing lunar regolith, engineers can potentially construct various structures on the moon. Understanding the surface temperature aids in identifying suitable locations for construction, such as rocky areas where the soil has solidified, forming slower heat conductors. Lunar Soil and Seismic Activity with ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 mission The soil profiling conducted by ISRO through the Chandrayaan-3 mission holds immense promise for various astronomical applications yet to be uncovered. Astronomers worldwide eagerly anticipate leveraging this new data for a deeper understanding of lunar soil composition and characteristics. Another significant aspect of the mission involved the Instrument for Lunar Seismic Activity, ILSA, designed to assess seismic activity around the landing site and provide insights into the lunar mantle and crust composition. Utilizing Microelectromechanical System, MEMS technology, ILSA effectively recorded vibrations induced by both artificial events, such as rover movements, and natural phenomena like quakes and impacts. ISRO elaborated on the functioning of the MEMS mechanism within ILSA, detailing its cluster of six highly sensitive accelerometers. The core sensing element comprises a spring mass system with comb-structured electrodes. External vibrations cause deflection in the spring, leading to changes in capacitance, which are then converted into voltage for analysis. On August 25, 2023, Chandrayaan 3's Pragyan rover initiated vibrations, which were duly recorded by instruments, marking a routine occurrence attributed to artificial activity. However, the following day, ILSA captured another vibration, distinct in its natural origin and unrelated to mechanical movements. Lasting only briefly, its source remained ambiguous, necessitating further investigation. Speculation arose post ISRO's announcement, hinting at the possibility of this enigmatic vibration being attributed to moonquakes. Such conjectures find grounding in historical records from the 1970s, where seismometers deployed by Apollo 17 astronauts detected tens of thousands of moonquakes over the subsequent five years, albeit within a limited area near the Apollo landing site. The aspiration of observing moonquake activity near lunar poles has lingered for decades, culminating in the anticipation surrounding ISRO's investigation to ascertain if this anomalous vibration signifies the inaugural documentation of a moonquake at the South Pole. Such clarification holds immense importance, especially in the context of lunar colonization, as settlement in moonquake-prone regions could pose significant risks to inhabitants. Meanwhile, the Ramba LP payload dedicated to measuring near-surface plasma density and its temporal evolution embarked on its mission. Employing advanced technologies, Ramba LP, also known as the Radio and Anatomy of Moonbound Hypersensitive Ionosphere and Atmosphere Langmuir Probe, aimed to characterize lunar plasma. Given the stark contrast between Earth and Moon atmospheres, understanding lunar atmospheric dynamics has remained a formidable challenge for researchers. However, on August 31, 2023, Ramba LP achieved a significant milestone by providing the first on-site measurements of the lunar surface plasma environment. To comprehend lunar surface plasma, it's crucial to recognize the Moon's sparse atmospheric composition, characterized by gas molecules dispersed so thinly that collisions are rare. This thin layer, constituting the Moon's atmosphere, plays a pivotal role in lunar atmospheric dynamics, facilitating the need for meticulous study and technological adaptations to ensure the success of future lunar missions. Exploring the Lunar Ionosphere with Ramba LP The ionosphere, an outer layer enveloping the lunar atmosphere, forms due to the interaction of certain elements reaching high altitudes with the vacuum of space. Cosmic rays and stellar radiation remove electrons from atoms, resulting in the formation of a thin layer of electrically charged gases, known as plasma. The Moon's plasma comprises atoms propelled upward by radioactive decay, micrometeorite impacts, solar wind, and even levitated lunar dust as elucidated by ISRO. Ramba LP, a crucial component of the Chandrayaan-3 mission, meticulously penetrates and measures this lunar plasma environment. Described by ISRO as a 5 cm metallic spherical probe mounted on a one-manta boom attached to the Chandrayaan-3 lander's upper deck, Ramba LP's lengthy boom ensures operation within an undisturbed plasma environment, isolated from the lander's body. The deployment mechanism, activated after the initial moon landing, enables accurate measurement of ion and electron densities and their energies, utilizing a sweeping bias potential ranging from 12 to plus 12 volts in 0.1 volt increments 
Ramba LP detects minute return currents as low as picoamperes, with a dwell time of one millisecond. Initial findings indicate a relatively sparse lunar plasma environment, characterized by a number density ranging from approximately 5 to 30 million electrons per cubic meter, as per ISRO's assessment. This revelation holds significant implications for future lunar explorations, particularly concerning radio wave communication. Sparse plasma reduces disruptions to radio wave transmission, enhancing communication reliability for lunar missions. ISRO's confirmation of the sparse lunar plasma environment provides valuable insights for explorers intending to utilize radio wave communication on the Moon. Advancing lunar exploration, the Vikram lander of the Chandrayaan-3 mission hosted another passenger, carrying two payloads dedicated to achieving specific objectives on the lunar surface. Weighing 3,855 lbs, the Pragyan rover, equipped with six wheels, embarked on its mission with two payloads. The laser-induced breakdown spectroscope, LIBS, and the Alpha Particle X-ray spectrometer, APXS. LIBS, the first payload deployed, aimed to determine the elemental composition of the lunar soil and rocks at the landing site. By releasing a high-intensity laser pulse into the surface sample, LIBS generated a bright heated plasma, enabling the analysis of elements present. ISRO elucidates the identification process, highlighting the spectral resolution and detection of plasma light by devices such as charge-coupled devices. Each element emits characteristic wavelengths of light in a plasma state, facilitating the determination of elemental composition. LIBS successfully detected elements including iron, calcium, titanium, aluminum, chromium, and sulfur. Further measurements revealed the presence of magnesium, silicon, and oxygen. Of particular note were chromium and sulfur, initially presumed to be in low concentrations on the Moon, emphasizing the significance of on-site analysis given the absence of prior soil examination methods. Lunar Volcanism ISRO emphasized the groundbreaking nature of Chandrayaan 3's findings, particularly regarding the detection of sulfur on the lunar surface. Previously, orbiting satellites couldn't ascertain sulfur's presence, making LIBS and APEX's measurements pivotal. The revelation of sulfur's availability in lunar soil marks a significant advancement, with implications extending beyond mere scientific curiosity. Furthermore, there are assertions suggesting that the Moon's highland soils, particularly those closer to the poles, may exhibit higher sulfur concentrations compared to equatorial highland regions. This heightened concentration of sulfur holds substantial significance as it serves as a marker for volcanic activity within the solar system. The quest to understand lunar volcanic history has been ongoing, with recent developments furthering this pursuit. China's U-22 lunar rover in 2020 unearthed hidden structures beneath the lunar surface using its Lunar Penetrating Radar, LPR. By analyzing how radio waves resonate off subsurface structures, scientists inferred evidence of lunar volcanism, dating back as recently as 100 million years. Apex, Chandrayaan 3's companion payload alongside LIBS on the Pragyan rover, corroborated LIBS's findings, confirming the presence of sulfur in lunar soil. Apex's capability for on site examination of soil samples made it the ideal choice for this task. Emitting high-intensity alpha particles and X-rays onto the soil samples, APEX analyzed the unique X-ray signals released by the atoms, accurately identifying and measuring the individual components. Its results aligned closely with LIBS's findings, providing further validation of Chandrayaan 3's success in advancing our understanding of lunar composition and history. Challenges and conclusion of the Chandrayaan 3 mission. Despite its accomplishments, the Chandrayaan-3 mission encountered significant challenges, particularly regarding the unfulfilled objectives of detecting hydrogen and water at the lunar South Pole. These objectives were crucial for understanding lunar resources, vital for both human survival and industrial operations. ISRO was aware of the difficulty of these tasks from the mission's inception, yet the lack of evidence for hydrogen and water on the Moon poses a major obstacle for extended lunar exploration and the establishment of permanent lunar colonies. ISRO had hoped to obtain tangible evidence of these essential materials during the mission, but this remained elusive. The Chandrayaan-3 mission, designed for a duration equivalent to one lunar day, 14 Earth days, faced further complications as darkness fell, signaling the onset of lunar night. The lander and rover entered sleep mode with plans to resume experiments upon the next sunrise. 
However, as reported by ISRO on Twitter, attempts to revive the rover were unsuccessful, ultimately leading to its demise. The harsh lunar environment characterized by extreme cold and prolonged darkness posed insurmountable challenges for the solar-powered mission. Despite efforts by European stations in Kourou and Bangalore, the lander and rover remained unresponsive. Subsequent statements from Space Commission members and former ISRO chairman confirmed the absence of hope for revival. Ultimately, on November 17, 2023, 124 days after its historic launch, the only part of the Chandrayaan-3 project to return to Earth was the cryogenic upper stage of the LVM3M4 launcher. This deliberate re-entry into Earth's atmosphere demonstrated India's commitment to mitigating space debris, marking the conclusion of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Thank you.